Hey, welcome everyone. This is episode three of our winter camping series. We here at Timothy Lake and it is wonderful out here. It's nice, you know, outside it's a chilly 25 degrees, but inside we're able to keep the rig to about 80 degrees. But enough of that. I'm gonna let you guys know how I did everything on this episode of the Smalls of the Adventures. Stay tuned, everybody. I hope you enjoy this episode. The Boy Scouts define cold weather camping as taking place when the temperature is below 50 degrees Fahrenheit and involves cold, wet, and or windy conditions. Winter camping is not an end in itself. It is merely the vehicle that allows us to enjoy being outside. Therefore, be creative. Use your imagination. Enjoy winter camping. Although the temperature is 25 degrees outside, we keep it warm inside. The children are here doing their schoolwork, staying calm, just relaxing. 78 degrees inside our rig. It's cold outside, but with two electric heaters, we can keep it at 78 degrees, sometimes going into the 80s. It's really comfortable inside of our rig. I'm gonna show you guys how we set up our water. You don't have to have a whole lot of money. You can do it with just pool noodles, aluminum for you, and some tape. This is brought to you by the Smalls RV Adventures. Here we go. We have these uh, heated water hoses from Amazon. I'm gonna put this link in the description. But those are chemical heated water hoses. It's just aluminum for you around the filter. We have a towel wrapping the filter and encased it with aluminum for you and wrap the heating coil you around it to keep the warm in. We had no issues with the, the water freezing. We remember to uh, wrap the heating coil you around. This yellow contraption here, that's just something we picked up from Amazon. It's a 14 gauge um, electrical outlet that you can plug into the, um, the electrical pedestal here. It has six outlets that you can plug in. Remember, you can uh, use the electrical outlet provided by the part that you're staying in and not your rig. Here's the pool noodle setup just to keep the open warm. This uh, spigot, we wrapped it with uh, a heating coil and enclosed it with the uh, pool noodle just to keep the temperature hot. Here's where the water is entering our rig. Again, you don't have to go high budget. This is just aluminum for you wrapped around the heating coil. Remember to leave your thermostat exposed to the temperature because that's how it knows when to cut on. When the temperature drops below 45, it's on. So you have to remember to leave it exposed so that your water lines don't freeze. You also have to be aware of which side the thermostat is on. Some of the heating coil you the heat, uh, hot water hoses come with everything already hooked up so it doesn't have a thermostat, it just cuts on. So this is our setup. Let me do a quick 
quick spin around so that you guys can see there's plenty of RVs out here and this winter camping engage it in winter camping but there's not as many as the summer you still have some vacancies here but as you can see all the way down there are RVs here winter camping the skirting you can have but it's not an absolute necessity at the minute as long as you can keep your head your rig warm and your underbelly warm you should be fine some people they have large propane tanks that were bought to them some of us just have our 20 pound or 30 pound RV tanks propane tanks Even Max is out here. He has his jacket on. It's about 20 degrees, so we try to keep him warm as well as keeping us warm. Hey, Mac. Hey, Mac. Say hi. He likes being on camera too. This is his a little bit of time. We love winter camping. So as the kids finish their schooling, we're all gonna come out and run around. But this is like one of the best adventures you can experience. You know, this is my first experience winter camping. So it's my family's, but just wanna let you guys know just to be very careful if you're gonna engage in this type of camping. Some people, they're used to it, you know, they live full time inside their camper, so they're, they're used to handling these conditions. So if you're gonna try it, you know, it's better to try it like in your driveway or your mooch docking somewhere where if you can't stand it, you know, you have shelter to go into um, because it's, it's kind of the same as living in a house, keeping everything warm and keeping your pipes from freezing. You know, in your home, you have to keep it at least 55 degrees so that your pipes won't burst from freezing. I mean, if you're living in there, you're not gonna keep it at 55, you're gonna keep it much higher than that. So it's the same at the, uh, when you're camping, you wanna keep your underbelly warm because that's where all your piping is and you wanna keep the inside of your rig warm. Now keeping the inside of your rig warm doesn't necessarily mean that the bottom of your RV, the pipes on the bottom are gonna stay warm. So you have to remember to run your furnace. If you have to, put a light bulb or just strategize when you park, when you get to the campground. If you park next to a lot of campers, there's not gonna be much wind that will be able to pass through the bottom of your camper. You can park your tow vehicle in front of your camera that blocks the front. If you park next to like a hill in the back, if you're backing in, that blocks the wind from the back. If you park in the middle of two campers, that blocks the wind there because their camper is gonna limit the wind from coming into your camper. So you're secure. I would not park like somewhere where there's no campers. Like if you see in this area behind me, you see that it's an empty loop here. There's only a few campers there. That's where you want to avoid because that's where you may get into some trouble with the wind passing through. And it does have the hill in the back, but you have to worry about the sides. Before we started this video, we camped out for about a day just to make sure what I'm saying is accurate in regards to our camper. We were able to hook up and not freeze following those steps. But as we're talking, there's a mower coming by. That happens in most of our videos when we're mowing or talking or videoing. A mower goes by, but that's the way it is. How you doing? That's the mower there, going by doing his thing. You can see him in the background there. He's doing his thing. Now 
now as we just gonna walk back and enjoy this uh the view here this is just amazing pretty pretty amazing what you can do when you're walking in these uh beautiful beautiful campgrounds we always stay in the same section over at timothy lake just because we like the uh where it is and we have the greatest cell phone reception so staying in this area really worked out for us a lot we love it let me give you guys a look at where our RV is it's excellent I mean it looks this looks beautiful in this area but I'll let you guys uh, take a look at it for yourself this is one of the best loops of Timothy Lake South it's up high on the hill as you can see the RVs are all lined up next to each other, blocking the wind from passing through the undercarriage of the RV. This limits your RV from freezing. There are some nice people here in Timothy Lake. Look at that beautiful American flag just floating in the air. something he's not supposed to. We all stay very colorful and vibrant when we go camping. Uh, we just we just love it, this temperature. I mean, again, I don't know if you can see the smoke coming out of my mouth from the, the, the warmth of my body and the breath, the hot warmth of my breath coming out to this air. But it's, uh, it's about 20 degrees out here and it feels, it feels good. I don't feel it because I came from inside of the RV. I mean, I was sweating in there, it was so warm. You had to make sure the family was comfortable. So I just kept it extra, extra warm just so that everybody is uh, safe and no one is worried. Uh, you always want to be protected. We bought extra propane. Luckily we bought extra propane because the propane station here, they were, fixing their propane uh, dispenser. So they're down. But we're gonna check again tomorrow just to see if they have propane, uh, if it's fixed. Because if it is fixed, we'll top off all of our propane tank. But we only have one that we use. We have two on uh, that uh, standby just in case we need it. But you go through one in this type of weather in about three days. Um, and we also have the <laughs> we also have the electric heat. Uh, the electric heat keeps the, the rig at about 80 degrees, 75 to 80. So it was like our ultimate. I uh, put on the furnace to warm the underbelly, and then I'll uh, maintain the heat with the electric heater. But you always have to remember, you fill those floors, and those floors are kind of cold. That underbelly is even colder your floors and they're warm that means the underbelly is warm so always fill your floors in an RV it's a good thing that they're taking those rugs out of the RV so you can fill the floors again if you have your furnace and the heat comes from the ground that's the best thing because that heat is going to warm up your floors as it warms up the underbelly now with the skirting that's going to help your uh, your flooring to stay warm but if you follow the steps that I did you'll be okay. We walk around there and our RV with shorts on and we're absolutely fine. All right, I'm gonna go back inside for a little bit and uh, we'll do some more of these, uh, this video outside uh, when the kids finish their schooling and in between their schooling when they're on like a little recess, we'll, uh, we'll bring them out. But they start early in the morning at about eight o'clock and uh, they're in there now with my wife doing their thing. Remember, education is the best. They are our future. When they start camping, can you just imagine what it would be like? Just having uh, the updated campers, updated vehicles, updated uh, technology. I mean, we only on the tips of all of this, the cups of all of this, and look at everything that we're doing. We're about three months in, and 
we're just having a blast. We don't want to stop. We go everywhere. And I'm working full time. And we're still able to shoot these videos and camp every week. This is just something recreational to, uh, to pass the time for us. But uh, when I retire, this is something we're going to be doing for months at a time. So uh, I'm just babbling away. I can talk for hours. Just babbling away. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. We're going to be back a little bit later. I'm going to help the kids out with some school. And then we're going to come right back out. So stay tuned. I want to thank you guys for watching. As you can see, this snow is coming down over here. And uh, I hate to, to end the video here, but you know, because we can just keep going. It's totally awesome. How you doing, buddy? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliant. I like your lights, too. They, um, this setup, it helps keep the mice away, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I try everything. I have lights inside, everywhere. So like even when we're storing it, it's the same thing. <laughs> but it's cool. This is awesome. It's snowing. Look at the place here. It's amazing. Huh? No, no, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay. Ricky from the Smalls RV Adventures. This is our winter camping series, episode three. I'm gonna film a couple of episodes while we're here. The next episode is gonna have to do with the water and not freezing while you're out here in the winter conditions. As you can see, it's snowing and we're hooked up. But that's the next episode. Until next time, I'm Ricky from the Smalls RV Adventures.